Okay, guys, I got a haul video here. Two things here. I mean, there's three things in my hand, but there's really only two things. Let me get a light on in here, though. Um, I... Okay, here we go. So, let's start with the first thing I grabbed. And I, I am a little annoyed about something about this release, but let me talk about this. So I got Spectacular Spider-Man, the complete series on Blu-ray. Uh, I ordered this off of Amazon because it was $40. And I was checking eBay listings because sometimes when things are a little too pricey, I just kind of want to see what this is going for. Uh, and I knew it was out of print, uh, the Blu-ray release. So I went on Amazon. So I just went on eBay, 60 bucks. So I said, all right, 40 bucks. Let me get it from Amazon. And I've been meaning to grab this. I kind of just kept negating it because... For a while, this was on Disney+. Plus. I wanted to watch the show, review the whole show. I wasn't sure when I was going to do it. I was thinking, like, maybe when they do another Spider-Verse movie or something. Um, but with the uh, new Spider-Man freshman year coming out, I decided now would be the best time to do it. Um, I'm going to review this in another Spider-Man show. But this is the best one, according to a lot of people. Um, and I, I start watching. I've only seen two episodes. And I'm... I get why people say that so far. Could be, could change my opinion, I'm not sure, but we'll see. Uh, I doubt it, though. So, $40, whole series, and it's not on Disney+. Plus uh, Because if you don't know, like, Sony owns part of the rights to Spider-Man. But I also don't understand that, because some of the other Spider-Man shows are on Disney+, Plus, but I don't, but this one's not. Um, it's, the Spider-Man stuff's confusing, because some of it's on Disney+, Plus, some of it's not. I don't really understand how that works. I don't think the MTV Spider-Man show uh, has ever been on Disney+. Plus, But yeah, so if you want to watch the show, you got to get this physical release. Um, I'm sure there I may, may be streaming somewhere else, but I didn't check. I didn't care. Because once, once it's not on one service, it's, it's on one. It's going to jump to another service, and I didn't want to be like watching through most of the series and then jump around. But what I got annoyed by is I, I did order this via Amazon from an Amazon reseller. And they did mention that this is the Canadian release. So there's like French on the um, cover. Now it's fine because it's literally the exact same as the standard release here in the States. Same cover, same artwork, same back. Um, Discs are the same. Like it's all the same English regular menus it's just you know if you know canada it's like there's a huge french speaking population over there so they have to do like both you want to understand or something like that i think that's annoying though that they didn't advertise but it's also like i didn't see any listings for the american release so i didn't bother and it's just the same i just wish they listed that because that might have deterred me a little bit might have tried to get it some other way but it's okay um at least I have it, and it, it plays really well. Uh, no, this is a great looking Blu-ray set. I mean, you open this up, and you get. Uh, I don't like that they do the four, they have four disc here. Uh, Spider-Man on the first disc. Uh, Spider-Man on the second disc. And the black suit, and then you get. There you go. The two Spider-Mans right there. And then you got Spider-Man the last disc. Yeah, I like each disc has different artwork. I just don't like that they're all stacked. But honestly, I think it should be okay. There's a, I'm surprised there's only 26 episodes. I know this show, I forget the whole story, but basically this show was cut co short. And uh, a lot of people love this show. I've been angry about it for years. Uh, but he, he appeared in like Across the Spider-Verse. Um, but he he's a great... Um, um, he's, uh, the voice actor who plays the Spider-Man, he's really good, and he's kind of been a fan favorite, and there's a lot of fun stuff with this show, but I guess it got cut, I forget the story, like I said, but it, it got cut short, but I thought it ran for two seasons, so there's 26 episodes here, Could, am I wrong? I don't know, let me know in the comments, um, 26 episodes feels like a season, though nowadays... That wouldn't be a season. That would be two seasons. 
All right, uh, last thing I grabbed, I grabbed this because it was 10 bucks, and I recorded a video, and I ended up not posting this video. I still might do it, but, I, but basically this video I was recording was uh, out of print Blu-rays or releases of movies that I were expensive now. And going through my collection, I realized so many of my movies are expensive. Uh, ones, and not that I ever plan on selling them or I care about the value. I have all the stuff you see behind me to watch or just have access to for videos or whatever it is. I have all this stuff for a reason, right? But the point is, I have all this stuff and I, uh... And I was going through all those movies that were out of print. Some of these things are worth money. And all the releases I was looking at were Disney titles, majority. There was a couple of them uh, that weren't Disney. Like, one of the big ones uh, was Fraggle Rock, the complete series. That's from Sony on Blu-ray. Like, 500 bucks on eBay in some cases. Like, it's crazy. Anyways, so a lot of that stuff's out of print. Super expensive now. And so, you know, trying to track all that. And so, I... Basically, was sitting there thinking about. It. I'm like, what other Disney titles do I need to get? And I and I need to be grabbing them now, because they're not going to be around anymore. Uh, because Disney is doing a lot of weird stuff with their physical media. If you notice, all their steel books spent 50, 60 bucks. Uh, I just pre-ordered the Loki season two steel book and the Hawkeye steel book, eighty dollars. And, you know, I, I really don't want to pay that price, but I know that if I don't, especially since now they're only doing the 4K options, they're gone. And so I have to kind of pay that price, even though it's not ideal, right? And so I just said, fuck it, I'm going to get them. But, you know, like things are, Disney titles are getting expensive. They're getting a lot more scarce. Um, I noticed their exclusives aren't sticking around as well as other studios exclusives. Uh, some of the like Pixar movies when I was I just finished collecting all those. Some of those 4Ks are not even being sold directly via Amazon. I had to buy them via Amazon resellers because I could not find Amazon.com selling these titles. So if there's any Disney titles you want whether that be from touchstone uh hollywood pictures 20th century fox star wars marvel whatever it is new old get it now because disney's playing games with physical media and i don't know what game they're playing where it sounds like some of these things might be getting uh out there more but it also seems like so many things are going away and they're starting to get pricey and you don't know what's going to go away and not come back. So I, I just recommend getting it. But anyways, encourage me to get this one, especially it was 10 bucks, the Preach Dragon remake. Um, I love the original Peach Dragon. I got, uh, I'm glad I got this with slipcover. What a gorgeous slipcover, but... It's not a great movie. It's a seven. It's a very seventies dated movie. I actually, I might do videos on these. That sounds fun. I probably might. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's not like an iconic Disney movie. Uh, it is for people who grew up with it, but it kind of is really dated um, in a lot of ways. It's it's very seventies, but it's a fun movie. I'd recommend it if you have kids, like you'll have a good time. It's it's goofy. It's fun. It's got issues, but overall, it's a very enjoyable movie. Um, but, you know, so Disney remaking it was really weird, and it kind of failed. And I remember seeing this. Uh, there was a theater in my town where they would take movies um, and show them for a dollar. Like, they'd been out a little bit. You know, people hadn't seen them. You know, that would be, that'd be a thing in my household of, like, my dad would be like, that's a dollar theater movie. And then we'd go to the dollar theater and go check it out, right? That's, that theater got uh, was had some issues, was failing. Uh, you know, a lot of people were complaining their seats smell like pee. It, it was pretty nasty. Um, so AMC uh, bought that theater out and uh, kind of refurbished them a little bit. I've never really been in there. I don't like AMCs. 
I think they're terrible theaters. Um, I feel like when I go to the movies, they're like corporate office. If I'm going into an AMC, and I don't like feeling like that. I feel like I want to feel like I'm getting an experience. I'm seeing something nice. But I don't feel that when I go into an AMC. Anyways, we're getting off topic. Point is, I saw this movie there, and I was disappointed because it wasn't like Pete's Dragon. But honestly, sitting with this movie and understanding David Lowry, who directed this uh, a lot better. He directed A Ghost Story and um, The Green Knight. He's a pretty interesting director. And any director that can take a Disney property like this and do, do something totally different and unique with it is awesome. Uh, you know, these Disney remakes are so unimaginative, un uncreative, and this isn't that. It's its own interesting little movie that if you love the original, I can imagine, you know, it being so different and not really just being Pete's dragon in name only. Like, there's a kid Pete, and there's a dragon. That's literally the only similarities. But honestly, if you watch that original movie, it's such a 70s movie. They were never going to make it like that. You're kind of dumb if you thought it would be uh, like that. But it is a it is a pretty good movie. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I want to watch it with some fresher eyes. Because I think that, you know, I haven't seen this since that a terrible experience of not really liking it. But it has sat with me. And I've kind of grown to maybe appreciate what it is a little bit more and I think I'll like it a lot more in second watch and if nothing else it is nice to have both versions and on the shelf together and I got it for 10 bucks so and that so can't really complain these are um not, not movies I love but uh they are uh definitely worth uh picking up for me let me know your thoughts like share and subscribe well I actually do love this one but this one's, I enjoy, but anyways, that's going to make it for the video. Let me know your thoughts.